Hello everyone, my name is Miss Brooklyn and today I get to do an ELA lesson with you guys and I'm so so excited so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you so that you guys can see what's going on as I go through my presentation. All right, so now I've shared my screen with you and you can see that this lesson is actually called All About Homophones and Sentence Types. All right, so this is just a little bit of an agenda for the day. We're going to do an introduction. I'm going to share some vocabulary words that will be helpful for you guys. I'm also going to let you know what materials you may need um, to do this lesson along with me. And we are also going to set a goal. I really like to set goals because I feel like it just helps us to um, keep focused and have something to look forward to. So we will be doing that. First, we're gonna go over homophones. I'm gonna tell you guys what is a homophone, give you some examples. We're going to practice with that a little bit. And then I'm gonna let you guys actually um, do that on your own and figure out some homophones on your own, which will be awesome. We'll take a quick brain break and then we will move on to sentence types, which is kind of the second part of what we are learning about today. And then we will actually get to combine those two um, elements together and build sentences with our homophones using those different sentence types and then I'll give you guys a chance to do that on your own and we will review everything we've done today review our objective and yeah and the standard we are following today is to demonstrate the command of conventions of standard English grammar when and usage when writing or speaking so basically, you guys are just going to be able to know how to use both homophones and also identify sentence types when you're writing or speaking. Okay, so for the objective today, um, our objective is by the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify sentence types and homophones and create sentences utilizing that knowledge. So basically, you will be able to come up with homophones. You'll be able to tell me what type um, of a sentence is a certain sentence, and you will be able to also um, create those types of sentences and maybe even use homophones in those sentences just using all the knowledge that you have gained today. So that is our objective for the day and we will check back in and hopefully we have met that by the end. All right, so for our materials today, you guys don't need a whole lot, but if you could get a writing utensil, and what I mean by that is any kind of writing utensil you like to use, I want, that's what I want you to use. For example, I have lots of markers, um, but if you guys feel like you work best with either pens or pencils or a colored pencil, whatever you have, go ahead and grab that. And then the other thing you will need is just a piece of paper. It can be lined paper or it can be, um, blank paper, whatever kind of paper you have. And then one other thing to grab would be either like a clock, so have a clock somewhere where you can see it, or if you have a timer, maybe you have a stopwatch, or maybe um, you have some sort of timer that you can use, you will want to grab that. Another option that I always like to add is if you do, I don't write it on here because most people don't have it, but if you do have a personal whiteboard and maybe an expo marker, go ahead and grab that. Um, it can be very useful for going through examples and just trying out new things. So if you have that, go ahead and grab it. If you don't, no big deal. I'm going to give you guys a chance right here to pause the video and grab your materials. Okay, so hopefully you guys have um, paused the video if you need to and gotten all those materials. Again, if there's something that you don't have, it's no big deal. We can make this lesson work no matter what, and I'm super excited to get started. All right, so here is our vocabulary for this lesson. 
And you might have seen this very first word, homophone, on the opening page of our slideshow, and you might be thinking, what is that? Well, I'm about to tell you. A homophone is two or more words pronounced alike, but they have different meanings. So they might sound the same, but they mean completely different things. And we have lots of examples of that that we will jump into here in just a couple minutes. All right, now these are types of sentences. A declarative sentence is a sentence that makes a statement. A declarative sentence will use a period at the end of it, not an exclamation mark, not a question mark, but a period. So it's making a statement. And again, I will give you guys examples of that and we will keep on going over that. Okay, moving on, the next one is interrogative. Interrogative is a sentence that asks a question. So what punctuation do we use when we are asking a question? If you guys know it, go ahead and say it out. Okay, we use a question mark. So when you see an interrogative sentence, you will see a question mark. Next is imperative. Imperative is a sentence that gives a command. So it is telling, it is giving us a command, it is telling us to do something. An imperative sentence will often have a period at the end, just like a declarative sentence. And again, I will give you guys examples of that as we move on. And lastly, let's talk about exclamatory. Exclamatory is a sentence that exclaims or is exciting and important. Um, and that sentence, we use an exclamation point. So you can look on the right of your screen and you will see a question mark and an exclamation point. Um, so the question mark is on the left and that's the question. That's why his hands are kind of up like this and our Ex exclamation mark is right here and that's when we're excited about something or we have something important to say something that we want to um, come across as very important that's when we use an exclamation point all right moving on before we jump into our lesson um, and we get into homophones and different types of sentences, I wanna go ahead and just say welcome to the Learning Lab. I hope you guys are having an awesome day. And before we get to work, let's just take a deep breath. Awesome. Let's set a goal. So in your head, if you can think of something, now that we've gone through the vocabulary, maybe you saw something in there that you didn't know what that was, or you didn't know how to, maybe you didn't know how to make um, a, an imperative sentence. So you can make that your goal. Um, so if you look back, you can look at these and maybe make a goal with one of the vocabulary words. So go ahead and set a goal that you feel like you would like to reach at the end of this lesson. And of course, just remember to have fun. We use language and writing every day, and this lesson will help us not only in school, but also outside of school in our daily lives. So it is super awesome and can't wait to get started. All right, so the very first thing we are going to talk about today is homophones. And again, this is just the definition, and it says a homophone is two or more words that sound alike but have completely different meanings. So here's just one example, and here it is. You can see on the left, there is an airplane, and above the airplane, you see the word flu. You can use that word when you're saying, I flew to California to go to Disneyland, or I flew on an airplane, or maybe you could even say, I flew through traffic. Um, but on the right, you will see a picture of a little boy who's sick in bed. And above that, you'll see the word flu, but it's spelled F-L-U. And that kind of flu is the flu like when we get really, really sick. 
So as you can see, I'm going to, I'm going to say these words out loud back to back and give me a thumbs up if you think they sound exactly alike. Ready? Flu and flu. Yep, they sound almost exactly alike, but they're spelled differently and they mean different things. Because if we put, here, let me stop sharing my screen for a second so I can um, show you guys on a piece of paper. If we wrote a sentence together and we said, I flew on a plane. If we said, I flew on a plane, does that make sense? Because this is saying, I flew, the sickness kind of flew, I flew on a plane. That doesn't make any sense. So it's important to use the right homophone in your sentence because they um, can easily get mixed up. So now let's just take out the flu, like the sickness flu, and I will show you guys. I flew, here we go. See if that looks a little bit better. I flew on a plane. That looks a lot better to me, and that actually means that we were just on an airplane. We took a flight on an airplane, and that has nothing to do with sickness, and um, that is the difference between, or I'm sorry, that is why you need to use the correct homophone um, and learn the differences, because if you use the wrong one in a sentence, it can really mess up your sentence and just make it confusing. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you again so we can get back to more examples. But I wanted to take the time to show you guys that on uh, my whiteboard so you could see why it's important to know the difference. All right, moving on here, are some more examples. So the very first example we have on the left here is ant and ant. Now I know that on the left, some people pronounce that aunt. So some say aunt and some say aunt. I don't know about you, but I say aunt. Um, I have an aunt named Joy and I call her Aunt Joy. So some people say aunt, some people say aunt, but still these, this is a homophone pair. Um, so an aunt or an aunt is something that, or I'm sorry, is a woman who is maybe the siblings, uh, maybe a sibling of one of your parents, um, or maybe they are married to one of your parents' siblings, but that is an aunt or an aunt. And then on the right, we have an aunt, and obviously that is a bug. That is not a human, that is a living thing, but it is a bug. All right, going on to the right, um, we have ball and ball. On the left, you can see ball is spelt B-A-W-L. And on the right, ball is spelled B-A-L-L. -L. And the meaning of ball on the left means like crying, like she was bawling. She was bawling because she didn't have enough money for a toy. So that means to cry. And then on the right, B-A-L-L, -L, ball, means he had a basketball, he had a beach ball. Um, it's an actual ball that you play sports with. So that's the difference between those two. Now let's take a look back at the example on the left, aunt and aunt, or aunt and aunt. Um, again, it's so important that you know the difference between the two because it makes a really big difference when writing sentences. I'm going to stop sharing with you guys one more time so I can write a sentence for you that will um, show you why it is important. So if I say, my aunt picked, whoops, picked, I'm gonna say picked me up from, the airport. 
All right. So this says, my aunt picked me up from the airport, but wait a second. Is this the correct aunt? Is that the correct one of the homophone pair? A-N-T. Because if you think about it, an ant, the bug, wouldn't be able to pick you up from the airport, right? They can't drive. They can't talk. So we're meaning our aunt, like our aunt. So we have to fix this because this word, this one word, completely changes the meaning of the sentence um, to where it does not make sense. So I'm going to erase where it says, Ant like the bug, and I'm going to fix the spelling and put my aunt picked me up from the airport, and that is the correct spelling. So now the sentence makes sense. All right, awesome. Okay, let's keep on going along. So the other example that we had here, I'm just going to share this with you again so that you can kind of get a visual and you can see it and remember. Um, the other one we had here was ball and ball. And again, it makes a big difference because those two words, even though they sound the same, do not mean the same thing. And that's the definition of a homophone. That's how you know that something is a homophone. Because when you close your eyes and you say them like, ball and ball, they sound the same, but they do not mean the same thing. All right, so if we want to do an example sentence for ball and ball, we could say, I have a red ball. All right, I have a red ball. Does this sentence make sense? I have a red ball. Yes, it does make sense because we are using the correct um, spelling of ball. But let's see what happens when we change it. I have a red B-A-W-L. Does that make sense? I have a red ball, like crying ball? No, it doesn't make sense. So that's why, once again, it is so important to know the difference between um, your homophones. All right. We have more examples. So on the left hand side here, you will see tail and tail. And if you know what T A L E, tail means, tail is like a fairy tale. It is a story. It is um, something written that maybe is like a, like a fairy tale, something that a story that was written and maybe it's magical, maybe it's, um, you know, exciting, but most of the time it's not true. It's just a tale. And the other kind of tale is T-A-I-L, and it's like a tail, like an animal tail. So I put in a picture of a dog here because as you can see, this little dog has a little brown tail and he looks like he's ready to go for a walk. But um, yes, so he has a tail and that is the difference between tail and tail. Another set of examples is night and night. So for night, we have the moon, N-I-G-H-T, N-I-G-H-T. That means it's nighttime. It's most likely we're asleep. It is dark outside and maybe we're having dinner. It is night. And then on the right, you'll see a knight, like a knight in shining armor. And that is spelled K-N-I-G-H-T. And that K is actually silent because we don't hear k night, right? We just hear night. So again, they are spelled differently, but they sound the same, 
they mean different things. A night has, a night with a K has nothing to do with it being nighttime. A knight with a K is like a royal soldier um, or someone who wears armor and has maybe like a shield and a sword and that is a knight. So we can write a sentence with that, um, with that. And I'm actually going to ask you guys which, which one that I should be using in this sentence. So I'm gonna say the blank, so you guys can answer. Went to, yeah. Okay, so. I left a blank in here and I'm just going to stop this share so you guys can see really well. And it says, the blank went to battle. So our two options are night, like nighttime, or night, like the soldier, with a K. So if you guys know, just say out loud which one you think it is. Awesome. Hopefully you said, Hopefully you guys said the night, like this. Perfect. Yes, that is the correct answer because it doesn't make any sense to say the night time, the night went to battle, but it does make sense to say the night like the soldier went to battle. All right, moving on. Here we go, I'm gonna share my screen with you so you can follow along. So we've been over these examples. Oops. Sorry about that, we went over the examples with, um, we went over the examples with night and night and tail and tail. Let's keep on going, I have some more examples for us. All right, I believe the next examples are find, or I'm sorry, eight and eight. So eight and eight, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about it here on my whiteboard. So the first kind of eight that we have is A-T-E, eight. And what that means is like he ate a lot of food. So I'm gonna write this, A T. -E. Okay, so on this side, we have eight, which means he ate a lot of food. On the other side, we have eight, which is like the number eight. So when you look at these two pictures, are these or I'm sorry, when you look at these two um, words, are they spelled anything alike? No, they're actually very different. In fact, this eight only has three letters and this eight has one, two, three, four, five letters. This one starts with an A, this one starts with an E, this one ends with a T, and this one ends with an E. It feels like they couldn't be any more different but somehow they make the same sound um, when they are pronounced. So I am going to draw a little bowl of, uh, let's say some cereal. Okay. So on this side, you can see this is a little bowl of cereal. Oops. And on this side, you see eight. And it's important to know the difference between these because again, eight, like he ate food, does not mean the same thing as the number eight. So what if I'm going to write a sentence and I would like for you guys to answer which one you think is the correct answer. So I... Okay. So my new sentence is, I need blank new shirts. I need blank new shirts. So we're looking for eight, but we are either looking for eight, like he ate, 
or eight, like the number eight. And I wrote it up here. So which one do you guys think goes into there? I'm gonna give you five seconds to go ahead and say it out loud. Go. Okay, hopefully you guys said that you think it is this eight that starts with an E and means the number eight. Because when we say, I need eight new shirts, we are telling how many we need. So we need to be using that um, form of eight. If we said, I need eight new shirts, that makes no sense. So again, that just shows you how homophones can sound the same, be spelled different, and not mean the same things. But they still are homophones because they sound the same. So moving on, I am going to share my screen with you guys again. Okay, we are going to take a quick brain break and I'm gonna share that with you. All right, we're going to take a quick brain break. During this brain break, this is really just the time for you to go ahead and stand up, take a deep breath. If you guys have a water and you would like to get a drink, like I just got a drink, make sure you're hydrated and just shake out your wiggles. If you guys are feeling like you have a lot of energy, go ahead and do that. Just take a second. Take some deep breaths, stretch maybe, if you wanna stretch. Awesome, guys. Do some shoulder rolls. Okay, I don't know about you, but I feel a lot more prepared to go into the rest of our lesson, just knowing that I took a little bit of a break and I feel like my brain is sharp and ready to go. All right, here we go. I am going to have you guys set a clock, or I'm sorry, look at a clock or set a timer for three minutes. This is the time when you can go ahead and take out that piece of paper that I was talking about. And I would like for you guys to see how many homophone pairs that you can come up with in that amount of time. So go ahead, get your paper and your pencil, and you can pause this video right here to do this yourself. Good luck, guys. Okay, awesome. Hopefully you guys were able to set that timer and um, complete a list of homophones. I don't know how many you guys got, but when I set my timer for three minutes, I was able to come up with 20 different pairs. So hopefully you guys got to come up with um, however many you were able to come up with. Whatever you can do is awesome. As I know, we're just learning this information. So the more you learn about it, the even better you will get at it, I promise. All right, so we are going to move on and talk about sentence types. I love talking about this because this is something that you guys will use and do use every single day and you don't even know it. Uh, maybe you've heard of the different sentence types, but today I get to actually tell you what they are and how they're used. And as you guys continue on in school, it can just help you to um, make your sentences even better and just know the difference between the types of sentences that you are writing. So before we jump into defining all the sentences again, I just want to walk through very quickly with you um, I already told you what the four types of sentences are, but I just want to go over it one more time before uh, we actually start really learning about them so you can just get the names in your head. So the first kind, there's no specific order, but the first kind is a declarative sentence, a sentence that makes a statement. Then you have an interrogative statement or interrogate, interrogative, I don't know, some people pronounce it different ways, but I say interrogative sentence and it's asking a question. It's where we used to uh, use a question mark. Then there's an imperative sentence and that is a sentence that gives a command. And there's an exclamatory sentence and it's a sentence that exclaims something that is exciting or important. 
So those are the four types of sentences that we will be talking about today and the four types of sentences that you might find when you are writing or reading. Um, you will probably see them at some point and well, you definitely will see them at some point. So we are going to jump into the first one uh, that we will talk about and that is an exclamatory sentence. And I love an exclamatory sentence because it is a sentence that exclaims um, something exciting or important. So we are going to look and I'm going to have you guys answer. Which of the following do you guys think is an exclamatory sentence? We are so excited that you get to go, go back to school. Or why didn't you tell me you're going back to school? Which one do you guys think is an exclamatory sentence? I'm going to give you guys a second to answer that. All right, hopefully you guys said it out loud. Um, but yes, it is the red answer. We are so excited that you get to go back to school. And the reason why that is, is because why didn't you tell me you're going back to school? That's a question, and there should be a question mark at the end. When we have an exclamatory sentence, there's always an exclamation mark at the end because it's exciting, and um, it shows the importance of what we're saying. So that second sentence should really be a question and have a question mark at the end. That would be an interrogative sentence. All right, moving on. And of course, we will give more examples of um, each sentence type at the end. Okay, let's talk about a declarative sentence. A declarative sentence makes a statement. So I'm going to read you guys again these two sentences and I would just love for you to tell me which you think um, is the declarative sentence. So the red sentence, the first sentence is, I like your pink dress or, why did you choose the pink dress? That was the blue sentence. So out loud quickly, just say which one you guys think is the correct answer, the red sentence or the blue sentence? The red sentence is correct. The red sentence is correct because you are giving a statement. You are saying, I like your pink dress. That's your opinion. That is a statement that you are making. But the second sentence says, why did you choose the pink dress? That again should have a question mark next to it. We are asking why. We are wanting to know why. We are wanting to know details. So that is a question. I like your pink dress is just a statement. So that is our declarative sentence. Okay. Now we are moving on to an interrogative sentence. So an interrogative sentence asks a question. And I have two sentences for you guys here once again, and I would love for you to tell me which one that you guys think is an example of an interrogative sentence. And again, just keep in mind that when the sentence asks a question, we are always using a question mark at the end. So an interrogative sentence will always have a question mark. So here's the first sentence, the one in red. I like cats better than dogs. Or do you have cats or dogs? I'm gonna give you guys a second to think. And when you're ready, tell me, do you think the red sentence is an interrogative sentence? or the blue sentence. Hopefully you guys answered, it is the blue sentence. In the blue sentence, we're asking a question. We're saying, do you have cats or dogs? We are trying to find something out. The first sentence is really just a declarative statement. We are saying, I like cats better than dogs, and it should have a period next to it and not a question mark. Another great way to remember the interrogative sentence is if you look on this PowerPoint, I put a little detective with the magnifying glass. 
And the reason why I did that is because you can always think um, of interrogation. Maybe a detective is trying to figure out something or is questioning someone, that's an interrogation. They're questioning what they're doing and they're trying to find out more information. So that honestly really helps me when I try to think of sentence types because I just have to remember that it's um, the same thing as an interrogation and it's interrogative and it's questioning. Um, so that's helpful for me and I hope it's helpful for you. With all of these sentences, you guys can find little tidbits I'm sure that um, you relate to and that help you remember which is which. But again, always a question mark because we are asking questions and looking for information. So moving on. Okay, we have our imperative sentence. Now, this sentence, this type of sentence, also uses a period, um, just like a declarative sentence. But this sentence gives a command. This is not just a statement, but it is a command. So, which of the following is an example of an imperative sentence? I'm going to have you guys guess again. The red sentence is, bring me your math homework. Or, the blue sentence, I like how you completed your math homework. I'm gonna give you guys about five seconds to say it out loud. Red or blue, which one is an imperative sentence? Okay, hopefully you guys said red because that is the correct answer. So the blue sentence does have the correct punctuation um, because it is also a period. But that is just a declarative statement. Um, that's just saying, I like how you completed your math homework. I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm not asking you anything. Um, I'm not shouting anything. But I'm just saying, I like how you completed your math homework. And that's a declarative sentence. Imperative, you're saying, bring it to me. Bring me your math homework. Um, I'm telling you to do something. I'm not asking you to do something, but I'm telling you. If I said, will you please bring me your math homework? Now that would be an interrogative question. It would be an interrogative sentence because I would be asking you, but I didn't ask you, I told you, bring me your homework. It's the same thing as maybe your parents or grandma, grandpa, they say, clean your room. They're not asking you to clean your room. They're saying, clean your room. You need to clean your room. So that is an imperative sentence, and hopefully that difference between um, the declarative and the imperative sentence makes sense to you because they do use the same punctuation, but they are two different types of sentences. All right, we are going to take the time together to actually take the knowledge that we learned in the beginning about homophones and the knowledge that we learned about um, sentence types and we are going to put them together and create some sentences with homophones. So um, the very first one we are going to do together is an imperative sentence. I'm going to um, actually put my, I'm going to put my um, mouse in there so we can type it out together. But let's think of a good homophone pair we would like to use for this sentence here. I think a great one for this sentence would be, maybe we could do, um, high and high. All right. So I'm going to stop my screen share with you for a second so I can show you on here. For our imperative sentence, we are going to use the homophones high and high. This high is a greeting or um, it's like being polite and saying hi to someone. This high means like, wow, that kite is so high up in the sky. It means like high up in the sky, high. Or, wow, you jumped really high on the trampoline. Okay, so let me take you guys back to the definition of imperative to just jog your memory really quickly. 
All right, so imperative is giving a command. So we are going to write sentences with these in them, imperative sentences. So one thing we could say would be, we could say, hi, like, hello, tell me your high score. For um, ping pong. Okay, so here is a sentence we have. We have hi, so we're greeting them, and then we have a comma, and it says, Tell me your high score for ping pong. So we are greeting them, we are saying hi, and then we are saying, tell me. So we're asking them to do something, or we're telling them to do something, giving a command and saying, tell me your high score for ping pong. Again, this would have been um, an interrogative sentence if we would say, hi, what is your high score for ping pong? That's a question. But we are not asking them that question. We are telling them to do something. So that is our sentence, and I will go ahead and type that in our screen so we have it on there, um, and so you guys can check back on it. So we are going to write together. It says, oops, it says, hi, tell me your high score for ping pong. And these can be silly sentences. We don't need to um, make really long sentences or difficult sentences, just whatever you guys feel is best. So next we have a declarative sentence. And for that sentence, remember, we are just making a statement. So for that one, I'm gonna stop my share again. We are going to use new homophones. So take a second in your head and think of a pair of homophones and maybe you guys could try this with your own homophones and um, I can make one with mine. So my homophones are going to be, let's do, okay, I'm going to do, actually I'm gonna use some that we, Eight, or that we did before, that we talked about in our examples. So, I am using eight and eight. This eight is I ate, and this eight is I have eight. Saying how many, it's the number eight. So, we are making a declarative sentence, so we are making a statement. So for this one, let's write, I, Eight, we can say I ate eight pizza. Eight different pizza. Okay, so. This sentence is a statement, and we are using the homophones eight and eight, and here is the sentence. It is a declarative statement, or I'm sorry, it's a declarative sentence, just a statement. I ate, like eating, from eight different pizza boxes. So they're saying they, I'm sorry, we're saying we took different pieces of pizza from eight different pizza boxes. So that looks good to me. Let's go ahead and write it in together in our slide. Go ahead and you guys can be thinking of what you wanna write um, for an interrogative question. All right, now we have interrogative and again, and um, that's asking a question. We're trying to find out information. 
Maybe it's something that we don't know. So let's try and figure it out. Let's use, I actually like the idea of using the ones that we already went over so we can keep practicing them. So I think we should use night and night. Again, the night with a K is meaning like a knight in shining armor. Um, and this night is like nighttime. It's dark outside and that's what we're thinking there. So let's create a question, an interrogative question. And I think if you guys want to go ahead and use your paper and take some time to think about it, you are more than welcome to. I'm going to say why, because why is a question word. It's um, a word that asks a question. So I'm going to say why does the night only come out at night. So there's my question mark, which shows that this is an interrogative sentence. And I said, why does the night only come out at night? So I'm saying, why does he not come out during the day? Why does he only come out at night? And that is an interrogative um, sentence. And we are asking a question. So let's go ahead and type that into our presentation. Awesome. Perfect. Why, oops, why does the night only come out at night? All right. And finally, we have an exclamatory sentence. And for this one, remember, we are saying something exciting. We are um, exclaiming something. So we can make this one just very happy and exciting. So for this, um, for this sentence, let's think of homophones that we would like to use. Hmm. What homophones do you guys want to use? I'm going to use homophones, but you guys don't have to use the same ones. You can build your own sentence. For this one, I think I am going to use um, by and by, which sounds like the same thing. We haven't talked about these yet, but by means bye. I'll see you later, B-Y-E, see you later. And by means, oh, I'm going to buy this item. I'm gonna buy this item at the store, B-U-Y. So we are doing an exclamatory sentence, exciting. It needs to have an exclamation point at the end. So I'm gonna say, um, whoops. Bye. Bye. Hope you get to help you get to. Buy, B-U-Y, a new Okay, so we said, bye, hope you get to buy a new phone soon. And that's exciting, we're excited because we're saying bye. We're very, um, we're exclaiming bye. Hope you get to buy a new phone soon. So let's write that in there together. All right, I am going to share my screen with you so you can see. So we are going to say bye. Hope you get to buy a new phone soon. All right. 
Perfect. There are our four sentences that we created together. Now, I actually want to allow you guys to set a timer once more. So if you have a clock or a timer, go ahead and look at that and try your own sentences. Um, maybe I would say build four sentences with homophones. Try every different kind of sentence, but this is your time now to go ahead and pause the video and try it out. Okay. Hopefully you guys paused the video and got to try out your own sentences. I'm sure they were awesome. And I hope that you guys really got an understanding about what homophones are and also um, what different sentence types are. Okay, so here's our objective for the day. It says, by the end of the lesson, you will be able to identify sentence types and homophones and create sentences using that knowledge. Do you guys feel like we met our objective? Give me a thumbs up if you feel like you can do that or a thumbs down if you feel like you didn't. I feel like we did that because we did learn about homophones. We gave some examples and we learned about sentence types and we had to pick out which one matched um, the sentence type. And we created some of our own sentences. So I do feel like we met our objective for the day. Now, this is a time where we get to check in on our goals. Um, I know at the beginning, I asked you guys to set a goal. If you did do that, do you feel like you reached your goal? And again, it's just awesome to set up goals because it gives us something to strive toward and just look forward to. So you guys can make goals outside of even just school. You can make them for your life. Maybe your goal is to make your bed every day, or maybe your goal is to walk your dog three days a week. Whatever it is, it's awesome to just make a goal and see if you can reach it. My goal today was to identify five different homophone pairs, and I really feel like I met this goal because we talked about more than five homophone pairs. So that is it for my lesson today. I hope you guys feel like you learned a lot, and I hope you have an awesome day. And be sure to tell your parents or your friends about homophones and maybe try to name some off for them. I think that they will find that so cool and awesome. So I just hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day. Bye-bye.